for drums, melody loops, and beat tutorials. Visit theproducerkit.com. What's good, everyone? It's Chambers. I'm in FL Studio 20 today, and today we're going to be looking at how I EQ drums. So I have this beat that I made the other day. Right now all of those drums are unmixed so the first thing i do i take all of my drums here you want to hold shift and drag down that selects all of the drums go into your mixer select an empty slot right click go to channel routing and hit route selected channel starting from this track now you have all of your drums into the mixer and i also like to label my drums just to make it more clear so we have an 808 and a clap hi-hat i also like to order my drums in a specific way in the mixer i usually start with all of my bass elements like the 808 the kick, then move on to the snares and the claps, then the hi-hat, and then into the percussive elements or things that are used to create bounce. So I have two snares right here. And I end it with stuff like open hi-hats and shakers or crashes. All right, so now let's get into the mixing of it. We start here with an 808. What I'm gonna do is add an EQ. I'm just gonna take the seventh band drag it down, cut out some of that high end. But I'm also gonna go to the mids and add some DB there. When you're playing a beat on an iPhone and you can't really hear all of that low end, you wanna hear some of that 808, so I'm adding more to that mid range with the EQ. Then I'll do a boost right here. Moving on, we're gonna saturate it, which is a lower form of distortion. So I'm gonna grab saturation knob. This is a free plugin by Softube. I'm gonna put the saturation type on keep low because we're working with an 808 and increase the knob up to about 2.2. So now hear the difference. Here's without and then with. I'm gonna put the 808 in mono also because we want it going straight forward. Then obviously lower the level for the kick. I'm also gonna put that in mono because we want it to drive forward and add an EQ. This time I'm gonna add some high end just to make the presence of the kick more clear around the 3K area. I'm gonna add an EQ to the clap too. We're gonna do a high pass filter, add some high end for more crispiness and add some in that mid area just for more body. Go to the hi-hat. I'm gonna do a high pass filter, cut out any low end that it might have. For snare A, let's grab an EQ, cut out that low end. Then for the second snare, we're going to add another EQ, then pay attention to the frequencies that you're looking at. And you're going to add to that frequency right here. Right here is where that punch is, these frequencies right here. Then lower that down, add some high end, and cut out any of that low, low end. For the open hi-hat, I'm going to do something similar that we did with the hi-hat and just cut out that low end. So now I have all of the plugins on the sounds that I want. Now it's about leveling and panning. So I'm going to turn the melodies back on, and let's start leveling. <laughs> I like to pan my open eye hats a lot to the left. Let's pan this first snare to the right for contrast. Bring in the bass. And I like to check in mono a lot like I'm doing here. Usually I don't really compress my drums or add reverb and stuff like that. It's really about balancing them with their volume, the panning, and the equalizers. On the master track, I always have Fruity Soft Clipper. I put the post gain at 79%. Always replace Fruity Limiter with Fruity Soft Clipper. So remember, we started by adding the drums into the mixer. Then we added our EQs. Then we leveled the volumes, used panning, checked in mono, and that was about it. So that's how I mix my drums in FL Studio. It's not a crazy technique, it's just more about the simplicity and the balance of it. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.